offered that last year, I think, or this year during Lent. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful, quiet time to slow down, unwind, and um, kind of hear, be quiet enough to hear the voice of the Lord. So we invite you to put that on your calendar. Second announcement is really an important one. We thank the hard work of our discernment committee, all eight members who have been meeting every other week. And uh, it's our turn to work. <laughs> That's coming up. Uh, we are all to watch for a survey that is being developed by the discernment committee. They're meeting Tuesday, uh, hopefully to finalize that survey. That will come out to us, and it is imperative that we all respond to that survey, that our voices are heard in terms of what our priorities are for our next director. So let's all please plan to do our best responding to that survey that will be coming soon. And a big thank you to all the members of our uh, discernment committee who are meeting so often to move this forward as quickly as we can. Uh, finally, a warm welcome to Father Mike Fidoa, who is our celebrant today. Uh, last time he was here, we all were asked to pray for him as he was heading off on a trip to South Africa uh, to do some mission work there. So our prayers must have worked because he's here with us this morning, <laughs> safe and sound. So uh, let's all join now in uh, our celebration this morning.
for that opening hymn. It's, uh, um, today's the second, so the fourth of October is a feast of Francis of Assisi, and that hymn is based on one of his canticles. So it's, thank you for having that as an opening hymn this evening. It is a pleasure to be with you all. Thank you for your prayers and our trip to South Africa. We had a great time. Um, and I'll tell you about it more next time than before. <laughs> So we celebrate this Sunday after Pentecost. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Responsibly by whole verse of song. 
by the waters of Babylon we sat down and left. Then we, rem we remember you, O Zion. As for our hearts, we hung them up on the trees in the midst of that land. For those who led us away captive asked for a song, and our oppressors called for mirth. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Uh, shall we sing the Lord's song of my native soil? For those who led us away captive asked us for a song. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. Let my tongue leave the roof of my mouth. If I, if I do not remember you, if, if I do not set Jerusalem above my eyes, Lord. Remember the day of Jerusalem, O Lord, against the people of Edom, who said, Down with it, down with it, even to the ground. Lord, I turn back on to lose your salvation. Happy the one who pays you back for what you have done to us. Happy shall he be who takes your little ones and dashes them against the rock. <coughs> now our second reading from the second letter to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure is in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and call us with the holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher and for this reason, I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed. For I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thank Thanks be to God. Say to the small berry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. 
Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later, you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Word. especially for those who preach, those gathered in churches throughout Florida. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people. Kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Most of us, the longer we know somebody, the more we have certain expectations of them. We know how they're going to act, right? Whether it's a member of the family, a loved one, relative, a friend, a neighbor, a colleague, someone here at church, someone we share a hobby with. Over the years, we've come to know what to expect. We know who it is that will bring sun to a gloomy day, and we know people that will be like Eeyore, right? <laughs> no matter how bright the day, there's always this cloud of rain that hovers over them. We know what to expect. We know who will listen to us. When we share with them something personal, we know the ones that will make it all about themselves. Whatever we say, they have a story to match. We know who to trust. We know who will show up. We know who will come early and who will be an hour or two or more late. We just know. We know what to expect. And, if the truth be told, we know that people have certain expectations about us. We have boxes that we put people in, and we know, we know, we know, that people have boxes that they put us in as well. Occasionally, though, occasionally, People surprise us. They do more than we expected them. They're able to lift themselves over the bar that we've set for them. Huh? And, fortunately, there are occasions when we even exceed expectations. I 
have to confess that when I read stories about the apostles in the Gospels, I generally have pretty low expectations of them. The Gospel writers seem sometimes to go out of their way to say, you know what, if this motley crew can do it, so can you. Sometimes when I read stories about the apostles, I wonder, why did Jesus pick them? What was he thinking? This is, of course, mostly true about Judas, right? What did Jesus see in Judas? What did he miss? Judas, who Jesus called, but who betrayed him. I also think the same about Peter, of course. Peter, who for every success he has, follows it almost exactly with failure. Whenever he says something right, he immediately falls on his face. Peter, Peter, who said to Jesus, I will die for you, and within hours denied that he even knew him. I have pretty low expectations when it comes to Peter. I have pretty low expectations when it comes to the other ones, too. They never quite get it. They always misunderstand. They're hard-hearted and hard-headed. What was he thinking? Often, when I've heard the gospel from this morning read, often when I preached about this morning's gospel, I put the apostles in that box of hard headedness. They come to Jesus and they say, Jesus, increase our faith. As if faith is something that you just pour into a vessel. It's like water that you pour into a canteen. You just ask for more. Or like rain that you put in a bin. Or like oil that you put in a candle. Just ask for more. Fill it up, Jesus. And then Jesus responds impatiently. You guys still don't get it, do you? You know, if you had faith even this big, you could say to the mulberry tree, be planted in the sea, and it would do it. But geez, guys, your faith isn't even that big. When are you finally going to get it? That's how I've usually read that gospel today. The disciples asking the stupid question and Jesus responding with impatience. But I wonder, I wonder if maybe this gospel is actually meant to say something strong about the apostles. You know, we're in the 17th chapter of Luke's gospel. Jesus is almost to Jerusalem. It's a journey that he began back in chapter 9. And now they're almost there. On that journey, Jesus has twice predicted that when he gets to Jerusalem, he's going to be betrayed. He's going to suffer and die. On that journey, Jesus has explained to the apostles what it means to follow him. What it's going to cost them. 
He's explaining to them how they too will have to carry a cross. And in the verses just before today's gospel, Jesus has told them to be careful because if they cause anyone to stumble, it's better that they hang a millstone around their neck and throw themselves in the sea. He's told them that to be his disciple means they have to forgive 70 times, 7 times. I picture the apostles as getting frightened. They're getting close to Jerusalem and they say to Jesus, we don't think we can do this. We don't think we can follow you, Jesus. We don't think we can carry the cross, Jesus. And Jesus reassures them. You know, even if your faith is only this big, you can do it. You can come to Jerusalem with me. You can carry the cross. You can be my disciples. I think this is what Paul was telling Timothy also. Paul is in prison again. But still. Friends, have deserted him. Paul has cheated death many times. But this might not turn out that way. Paul knows that he's running out of time. Paul knows it's time for him to pass his ministry on to Timothy. Timothy is reluctant. Paul's left some pretty big shoes to fill, and Timothy is not sure that he can do it. So Paul writes to reassure him. <coughs> you can do this, Timothy. Rekindle the faith that your grandmother and mother gave you. Rekindle the faith that you received when I laid my hands on you. You can do this, Timothy. Because the Spirit of God is with you. Have you ever wondered if you can do this? Have you ever wondered if you can be a disciple? Faithful. If you can love as Jesus loved, if you can forgive as Jesus forgave, if you can carry your cross, if you can be the example, the living presence of Jesus in our world, do you ever say, I don't know if I can do this? I don't know if I can live faithfully. Our reading from Lamentations today is pretty desolate, isn't it? The author is writing from exile and he's remembering Jerusalem in all of its glory. And he knows but that city has been destroyed. He sees in the face of his fellow exiles mourning, grief, and desolation. I was thinking about that this week. 
as I saw pictures before them. Utter destruction and desolation. Faces of hopelessness. I'm thinking of that when I see faces from Ukraine. This war that just goes on and on. How do we be faithful in the face of that desolation? How do we live faithfully in the desolation that hits closer to home, right? This family struggle financially. or with, with illness. How do we live faithfully in these times? Sometimes we say to Jesus, I don't know if we can do this. I don't know if I can live faithfully. Jesus, I'm not strong enough. I think the readings today are meant to reassure us that even with faith that that's small, we can do it. We can tell that tree to be planted in the sea and it will. The readings tell us, rekindle your faith. Remember those who passed faith on to you, your parents, your grandparents, your teachers. Remember their example and live like they did. Keep praying. Nourish yourself with Eucharist. Do the next good thing. Smile at the clerk. <laughs> Say something nice to someone who annoys you. <clears throat> Give a dollar to someone who asks for it. Be kind to a stranger. Forgive somebody who doesn't deserve it. You know, I worry so much about Ukraine, the Florida, the people there. But there are people right in front of me who need an act of kindness. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's where it starts. Jesus tells us that we can do this. That we can live faithfully. That by doing the next good thing, by the power of the Spirit, we can carry our cross. We can follow Jesus. And we can help bring healing to our world. Amen.
St. Paul's Mosquito, Eileen Stoppin, priest in charge. For those in need of healing, especially Blanche, Dorothy, Carol, Joanne, Arlene, Barbara, Susan, Preston, Frank, Mark, Elmer, Dave, Donna, Barb, Maggie, Tom, Ruth, Chris, Matt, Harold, Rebecca, Harold, Rebecca, Judy, and all those whose lives have been affected by COVID and all who have asked for our prayers. Dave, Shane. We give God thanks for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. Look with favor, we pray on your servants, Barb Blyer and Beverly Winders, as they begin another year. We also thank you for the love and witness of those beginning another year of married life, Tim and Joy Foster. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially Robert Wallace, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Debbie Hefner. We pray for peace in the world. Help leaders of all the countries to make good decisions. Help us to learn to live together and to try to understand each other, even though we may seem very different from each other. Remind us when we forget that we are all your children who share this earthly home. Help us to live in peace and harmony. Almighty God, our Savior and Protector, we humbly seek your loving wisdom and goodwill for the discernment committee of St. Philip's while we undertake the process to call our next director. We ask that you direct us, O oh Lord, in all our doings and assist and guide our committee in the search for our next director, who we do not yet know. Grant us all, in all our doubts and uncertainties the grace to ask what you would have us to do, that the spirit of wisdom may direct us to wise choices. We beseech you, O Lord, to guide the hearts of all prospective rectors in hearing the call to serve St. Philip's and lead them forward in wise discernment and grace to listen and follow your guidance should one be called to bless us with their presence. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who prepares us to you? We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, O most merciful Father, and in our passion forgive us our sins, not only the unknown, but they will stand in the love of them. And so hold us by your spirit, that we may live to serve you in the midst of our life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Always with you.
galaxies, suns, the planets, and the courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, we were created, and have your being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rules of creation. But we turned against you, we betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. I am the son of the reconciled us. I am the son of And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending kingdom. <laughs> Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection and as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Mary, Tabitha, and Mary. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes. To see your hand at work in the world about us, deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. This is the Lord, who to us for breaking our prayer. Accept these prayers and praises, Father. Through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church, gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we serve a loving God. Therefore, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. For thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we 
forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
Shri Sharadad, have a good morning. We are graciously accepted us as the living members of your own son, the Savior, Shri Christ. And you have heard us as the spiritual rule in the sacrament of the body and blood. Such a sign of the world of peace and right and strength in your church, the love of the Savior, with blood and the Savior of the Father. May the blessing of the God of Abraham and Sarah, and of Jesus Christ, born of our sister Mary, and of the Holy Spirit, who broods over the world as a mother over her children, be upon you and remain with you always. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And, uh, That's our problem. Yeah. And then go back up. Hi, I'm all of those. 